Well, it's day two and it's just about in the books. It is the post game show here. The Live Golf League DC edition just outside of the nation's capital. It's been tough out there for a lot of these players. It's a long course, a big boys course is what I've heard it described as. Dustin Johnson, a level par round for him today. It's not been hard work for everybody. Yeah. Mito Pereira, one of the stars of day two. Super Saturday, just about in the books then here at Trump National. Well, it seemed like a struggle for a lot of the players out there. Uh, I think Don mentioned the, the course showing its teeth. It got a little breezy, a bit windy towards uh, the end of the round, uh, but a lot of players fighting the course and staying in contention. Yeah, those holes around the river, uh, along the edge of the Potomac, you know, definitely took their toll. And I think pretty much every group that we watched, you know, struggled through them. Uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, you know, with 9 being the one that, you know, the kind of season you either make 3 or 5 there, apparently. Yeah, I don't think they're going to make it any softer. We can't control what the wind does tomorrow. I expect it to be very similar. The course is just going to get firmer, but there's so many intricacies of this course. It's new to the viewers. It's new to us. It's new to almost all the players, but I think it's an absolute master piece because you have to miss it in the right spots around the greens. You have to miss the fairways on the right spots to give yourself an angle into the greens. Mito Pereira shot 500 today hitting 10 greens in regulation. That's yeah. smoke and mirrors right there. That does not usually hold up in the long run. So I think uh, for him to come out on top tomorrow, he's probably going to, as he said, probably going to have to tidy up those iron that iron game a bit. Yeah, and if I'm Harold Varner, I don't feel too bad, Jerry. No. You know, he goes out, he shoots uh, 72. And I think if someone had said to him, you know, I mean, you shoot 72 today, you're only one shot back, probably, you know, might have taken that. Yeah, well, Mito Pereira, the star of uh, day two here, and he will take a one-stroke lead into Championship Sunday, as Jerry mentioned, a five under par 67. And it really helped Torque as well to the top of the team pylon. Heading into the final day, that was his third shot at three, a birdie for him there. He was red hot at this point in his round. Three straight birdies, three, that was four. And this is five, his second shot. He was in confident mood when he was in our studio post-game yesterday. And he's taken that into day two. Looking for his first Live Golf individual win. This is his third at 13, where he'd make another birdie. And for birdie at 14. And birdie at 50. So it's Mito's day today. But what is it about his game that suits this course? I personally, I think this is a ball striker's paradise. And he's a very dynamic ball striker. Most of the the players in professional golf who come from Spanish speaking countries are very dynamic ball strikers because of the conditions in which they grow up. They have to learn how to work it both ways and he keeps it low and firm fairways keeping it low is not a bad thing. Yeah, the one thing that he's got to watch uh, and we saw this uh, last year at the PGA Championship, he's got to finish his follow through. You know, wh whenever he makes a mistake, it's usually because, you know, he wants the club head back or wants the ball back, something like that. So if he can free uh, swing freely tomorrow, you know, he might be uh, he might be hard to beat, but there's a lot of players behind him that uh, that can shoot low. He's also figuring out some pretty tricky greens. We've seen some of the best players in the world completely baffled by some of the reads out here. Again, because there is very little experience on the course, and there's a lot of double breaking putts. He seems to have figured it out as well as anybody. Yeah. Henrik Stenson was excellent today, wasn't he? Oh, a yeah. five under par 67 for Henrik, so he's seven under and in contention. The Majestics haven't had a good run of it. Stenson is their uh, highest ranked player at 31. He hasn't really challenged for an individual title since Bedminster uh, last year when he won his first Live Golf event, having signed mid-season. That was for birdie at six. He made four straight. That was at seven.
This is the uh, eighth. That was arguably one of the moments of the day for anybody. But Henrik Stenson, at this point in his round, was just superb. This is second into the ninth. He would put that away for a fourth straight birdie. Hemrick must be delighted, well, we heard from him. He is delighted to be where he is, and you wouldn't count him out tomorrow, would you? No, he is one tough competitor. I remember, you know, I was on the ground for the final 36 holes at Troon. Where, oh, uh, the duel. The duel between yeah. uh, himself and, uh, and Phil Mickelson. And uh, I don't recall uh, in all of my, my career uh, in broadcasting, certainly seeing, you know, a tougher competitor than Henrik Stenson. Well, and he, had, he was dialed in as well. He had that ball striking that gets laser-like in precision. And he said he wasn't really in control of all his game today. He managed it well is what he told Troy. But that three wood on 13, his final full swing shot, that three wood, if you saw where it landed in the bunker, it yeah. was right under the lip, literally dead in line with the bunker. <laughs> and it never curved, uh, I mean, a foot. That's how Henrik Stenson hits it when he gets dialed in. And if the putter cooperates, which it seems to be, and he, does, he uh, I don't think he has a lot to do other than go out there and let it happen. Yeah. Well, it's going to be fun to watch tomorrow. Plenty more to come here in the post-game show. Don, we'll send it down to you on the putting green. Hey, Anna Baron, thanks for spending. Sorry to yeah, disturb no, you. No, no, that's all right. Even par so far this week, how would you assess your game? Uh, it's been a bit of a struggle. I think off the tee, I haven't found enough fairways, and, you know, it's hard to score around here if you're not in the short stuff. Uh, but, yeah, you know, sometimes you've got to grind it out. I still think I'm in an OK position. If I can go low tomorrow, I can still come off from this week feeling good. You say you, uh, your tee shots are not so good, but you come straight onto the putting green. How's your putting been? Putting's been better today. Yesterday, again, missed a few. Uh, no, the greens are a bit tricky, but yeah, just uh, you know, going through my maintenance. What What do you work on when you you know post round on the putting green? Just you know, tell us and the viewers out there. I mean, if you look down at what I'm doing, I have uh, basically I come out with a laser. I get my line for the putt, and then I take a sharpie and I mark dots out. So that's basically essentially the straight putt to that hole, which is about a cup and a half right. And what I'll come and what I'll do is when I set up. Uh, you know, I'll start aiming to any of these three dots, which is essentially the same line, but I'm training my eyes to aim at an intermediate target because when I put on the golf course, I like picking a spot to roll it over. Uh, so, yeah, this is more like eye training and just seeing the ball react. Uh, so, yeah, just, just some of the maintenance stuff I do. I mean, you've played in Asia, you've played a lot in Europe, yeah. you've played a lot in America on tour. How much adjustment do you have to make? Like these are bent greens, mm. but you've played a lot on Poana, you've played a lot on Bermuda. Yeah, what what yeah. sort of adjustments do you have to make? I think the biggest adjustment you got to make is speed. Uh, you know, Bermuda greens, if you hit spots that are really soft, they tend to dive in the end, especially if the grains, you know, old or, or strong. I think in bent, you can hit them a lot softer. You can dive them in. Uh, you can also hit putts, uh, you know, the same putt with different amounts of break if you hit it six inches past, a foot past, or two feet past, because the greens are pure and we have great greens this week. So, you know, things like that. I, I think most of us, when we get to, when we adjust from course to course, the first thing we do is just get our pace dialed in and then work backwards from there. Well, I won't bother you anymore. <laughs> Thanks for your time. I need them done. Thank you. We'll leave Anoban to his uh, practice putting. We'll send it down to Suan with, I'm sure, a pretty happy range goes, Captain. Well, first of all, I think he's really happy that I have the right hat on today. But Baba, you know, I feel like we've been asking the same questions because your guys have been playing so good in the last few events. Harold in the final group tomorrow. What are your thoughts? Um, I'm looking forward to it. You know, I want him to play well. I want him to get some confidence, um, get used to being around the lead, being being under pressure like that. Um, that's what we all need to do, right? We all need to get that feeling, get that uh, trust in our game. Um, today, he, he felt that battle, so hopefully tomorrow he'll feel it even more and get back to that eight under. Um, but, you know, we need the rest of us to, to play well. I think you said we're three back, um, so looking forward to making another podium or giving the effort to and uh, maybe pull out another win. Well, is there any advice you're going to be giving Harold tonight? No, his family's here, uh, his son's here, and his wife's here. So, um, you know, just let him take it easy, spend some time with some friends, let the kid go wild in the in the room there. And um, we had some fun last night with him screaming and yelling, just like Harold would do. So uh, <laughs> it was awesome. And so hopefully um, Harold could just relax and get ready to play golf. What do you think is the key to playing well on this golf course? 
Wow, it was crazy today. There were some pins out there today getting baked out around the holes. Um, yesterday, I putted atrocious, uh, made me frustrated. Uh, and today, I figured out what was going on and um, putted a lot better. So I think key around here, everybody can hit the ball pretty good. Um, it's coming down, hitting the ball in the right spots. So you've got yourself uphillers and then making those. I mean, you're going to have to make some 15, 10 footers, uh, five footers for par. And so you're going to have to uh, make some good putts and, and just keep battling. And finally, when are we going to see another live goat? <laughs> you never know. You never know what happens with us. Um, there were some security issues around this place, so <laughs> we, uh, there was not many live goats around here. So uh, we have to find another place. All right. Thanks for the chat, Baba. Always a pleasure. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, the goats go, go. didn't have the necessary accreditation to get here yeah. today. I uh, had fun touring with the family at the Capitol and the Smithsonian as well was a big hit. Great stuff. 76 yesterday for Bubba. That was four over par. 68 today, four under par. So he's level, and the 68 today counted for his team. Don, back to you. I'm with Joaquin Neiman, captain of Team Torque, who've got the lead and looking to be the first repeat team winner this year. Joaquin, how excited are you and your team? Yeah, I'm looking forward for that for sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm excited. Uh, Kind of a little bit pissed at the beginning, saying that Team Turkey was uh, on sixth place starting the week. So we were kind of like second, third place before that. But yeah, I mean, you can tell that the teams are pretty strong right now. So it's going to be a fun day tomorrow. I see you working your putting. Uh, something very interesting I notice. You do this with your right arm just before you putt. Can you show us and tell us why you do that? Yeah, of course. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a thing that I've been working probably for the last two, three years. And um, yeah, I mean, the main thing of keeping my, yeah, you can see every routine I do, I kind of like put my shoulder on the back and try to put it like high, you know, like high and behind. That way my shoulders are kind of like more straight for me. I mean, it kind of feel weird for me, but it's where I, I am in a better position for a better stroke. So you just gotta trust that. Is that something to do with the dominance of your eyes? Is, are you left eye dominant or right eye dominant? Because I'm I know a, a lot of guys. Yeah, I'm a left eye dominant and I, I tend to go a little bit kind of like this. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, kind of trying to keep my shoulder up high helps me a lot to kind of be in a, in, a, in a good position, you know? So, do you mind hitting a couple first and showing yeah. us? I mean, yeah. So you line up the ball with the line too? Yeah, I try to see a little point where I'm aiming here. So right now I got that like, like little white stone there. So I mean, I just put my putter straight aiming at that. And then I just put it on a good position there and just trust it there. Yeah, that's it, what I needed on the course. <laughs> <laughs> These greens are pure though, aren't they? I mean, if you're rolling it well, you can make a ton of putts. Yeah, they're super, they're rolling pretty good. Uh, it's been tricky for me. They have kind of like some double breakers in there. So sometimes it's, it's just hard to trust the read, but once you, you got the stroke and you trust it, it's, I mean, the greens are perfect. Thanks for your time, Mark, and you're always yeah. so generous with it. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Well, Torque came in to day two. They were tied for third overnight on eight under par. They were the best in show today on 10 under. Waco Neiman, uh, one under today. So a pair of 71s for him. He didn't count yesterday, he did today. Sebastian Munoz was four under par for his second round. And Mito Pereira, five under par. So Mito has the individual lead. And Torque have the team lead by three shots. Here's Waco for birdie at 13. And then soon after, Sebastian Munoz for birdie at 11. And Mito Pereira ended his round very, very strongly. This for birdie at 14. 67 for Mito today. One shot clear of Harold Varner because of that. Birdie at 18. So let's take a look at the team leaderboard as it stands going into Championship Sunday. And it's going to be very exciting. Five teams separated by just six shots. Torque on top on 18 under par. Stinger, they held a three-stroke lead at one stage. They trail by three now. 
Level with the Range Goats on 15 under par. The four aces right there in the mix again on 13 under. And the Majestics, who are looking for a first podium finish in 10. They are on 12 under par. What about the uh, score worm for the teams here, chaps? It was a busy worm. Yeah, yeah. Those, those worms are pretty close together. And uh, I think that tells the story. Really, you know, anyone down to, I think, you know, the high flyers who are nine back, uh, that's, uh, that's nothing uh, as we've seen. Yeah, so Torquay, who uh, won earlier in the season, a narrow victory over Smash in Orlando, and they appear to be in very, very good form here this week. Yeah, well, you've got Pereira, obviously, in the lead there, and, uh, you know, Waco Neiman, uh, Sebastian Munoz, uh, all playing well, um, you know, but the GOATs, I've got to say, you know, <laughs> they're right there. Yes, they are. And uh, my high flyers at one point led early in the day by a yeah. shot. Or right, David mm. still counts a in at uh, nine back. It's going to be a big ask, and that's going to take a good effort from uh, Phil Mickelson. But he will certainly try and rally the troops tonight, and he's going to have to lead by example tomorrow. Well, the Ironheads slipped back. They were the overnight co-leaders with the Range Goats on 10 under. It was only really Kevin Nahr who produced for them today. A three under par 69 has him at seven under, which is two back of our individual leader, Mito Pereira. That was for birdie at four. And then for birdie at six, there was a mixture of elation and frustration for Kevin today. He was excellent out of the bunkers, though. That was his third shot at seven. And then finally, for Kevin Nart, whose score, of course, counted today. He was the only man under par for the Ironheads. That was for birdie at nine so the individual leaderboard going into championship sunday looks something like this in fact it looks exactly like this vito pereira nine under par harold varner the third a level par 72 today he's eight under then we've got the two chaps on seven under nar and stenson cam smith don't rule him out of it and you cannot rule out louis oosthuizen either on six under par stinger fans all over the world tuning in go stingers go grace from the eastern cape of south africa watching from mossel bay south africa go stingers cape town represented there johannesburg represented great stuff so it's quite appropriate that we've got to louis eustace with us the captain of team stinger and uh, david uh, were you over par today? Is that why you're wearing the hat? Yeah, I, this, we wear this for the worst announcing. <laughs> you're just going to stick with it all week? Comfortably. Yeah, <laughs> right. Louis, we've got to talk about this hat. Whose idea was this? Uh, it was my idea. Yeah. Um, I thought we had to do something to sort of pick up the guy that didn't play a good round. Um, you can expect Shaw playing really being very focused tomorrow to get a good score because he's, he's had it uh, twice. Yeah, he's unfortunately <laughs> got to wear it tonight. Um, but yeah, it's a good thing, you know. It's it's just a fun thing between us. So we always like to, um, you know, goof around a bit um, off the golf course. So uh, yeah, um, it looks good on you, though. I got to say, so it looks great on David. Yeah. He's playing havoc with his headset at the moment. There we go. Oh, goodness me! You've got to walk into the clubhouse, yeah. into, into the locker room. <laughs> there was. Um, Dean wanted to actually hit the putt in Australia. He wanted to hit the putt on the 12. I'm like, man, that's up to you. <laughs> so, uh, Charles was coming this morning with it, and uh, yeah, he, um, there we go. <laughs> who, uh, who, who actually got it today? Uh, so, Charles had it this morning, and yeah. Charles got it again. Oh, he's got tonight. it again yeah. tonight. Um, right. So, like I say, you can expect him to be really focused. Yeah, tomorrow. I should probably have it washed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's yeah. interesting because, you know, you won in Tulsa the last time out and actually only one of your scores counted, didn't it? So it, yeah. it's obviously, you know, it, it is serving its purpose as a motivational tool, isn't it, for yeah. the rest of the boys? No, I mean, look, we, 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 we're getting there with, with each of us uh, playing better and better. And, and you know, Charles really close. We, we play practice rounds. You can see the guys really close. So... Um, it's good. It's, we're pushing each other to play, to play hard and to really, um, you know, focus and, and uh, you know, uh, 
doesn't really matter your individual score. You you look at the te- leaderboard and you're like, man, how can I help the team? Mm. Uh, I need two more birdies and my score counts, or I'm completely out of it, or um, you know, I've, I'm the leader today. I need to to put the foot down. So um, it's such a great thing to to be part of a part of a team again. And and yeah, we got a we got three behind. Yeah. And uh, tomorrow we need to to dig deep. You're not doing too badly yourself, by the way. You'll no. be fighting on two. Yeah, it was tomorrow. a great start. <laughs> How about that? You're always good for at least one of those per round, Louis. Yeah, that was a good start on the on the fourth hole. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I played decent. Uh, you know, I made good putts. Um, had a bit of a blunder there on on 15 and and missed a short one now on my last hole, but. Uh, but yeah, I made a nice eagle on 18 to get myself to 500 for the day. Um, so yeah. So at 67, this is the eagle at 18. Straight down the middle, beautiful. So Stinger 15 under, three off the lead. Louis Eustazen at six under, just three off the lead. Yeah, um, just three back. Your your team and this identity of, of Stinger, because we, we were at the draft in London. I can remember watching you pick and make your picks. Brandon Grace was your third pick, by the way. He's been absolutely sensational. But when did it kind of become obvious that this was going to be a South or Southern African-based team? Yeah, so so me, Sean and Brandon was, was always going to be in the team. Um, that was sort of, you know, the, from the start. And and then we had to figure out what we're going to do. And, and, and I, I said to them, and we all agreed, like, we got to make this a South African team. You know, we were a bunch of guys there in London. And to get the fourth guy, we wanted it to be a South African. And, and um, you know, I picked Henny to, to be in our team. And then we had Sean for a little bit in the team as well. And and then, um, you know, end of last year, we got hold of Dean. I said, Dean, mm. uh, what do you think? Um, and he jumped on it. And, and he, I mean, he's a great player and he's getting better and better every week. You think that's uh, sort of settled the team for now? You know, you've had a, that, that fourth man has been kind of rotating. Yeah, we, we pretty settled. Um, I think um, it will be tough to, to get uh, to get rid of these boys. Yeah. Uh, we, we're a good group. and. And like I say, we're playing some good golf now and, and we're really motivating each other and we're helping each other and, and we're doing a proper team thing. And and uh, it'll be tough to, to get rid of one of them. Uh, <laughs> hopefully no one wants to steal them. So. <laughs> well, the camaraderie in your team is absolutely fantastic. What is yeah. it? Grin and grind is your, uh, yeah. is your motto. Uh, that's Brandon Grace's second shot at 16. Uh, you had a three-stroke lead at one point, Louis. Yeah, you know that that's the thing with this with the team format. Like um, you have one or two shot lead, and the next thing you look at the leaderboard, you're one behind. So um, you know it's uh, you need to really play well to to keep up the, the leaderboard. You were consistent to start the season, and by consistent, you were consistently fourth three straight times. Then you got on the podium in Adelaide. Not so good in Singapore, down in tenth. Then you won in Tulsa, and you're going great guns here. On the uh, hashtag live broadcast here, a question has come in. Keep showing why South Africa needs a tournament in 2024. Yes. Wow. Yes, it does. Yay. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, look, we, we're working on it. So um, it's, it's something that um, we all really want. And I, th- I know there's work being done behind the scenes to try and get where? it. Where? Where would you play it, do you yeah. think? There's so many great golf there's courses. There's great down golf there. courses down there. I mean, it, uh, it'll be a tough one to say where, but um, there's great courses. It'll be nice to visit Cape Town. Hey, if you're a wine fan, <laughs> there's something about that mountain, you know, that gives you a yeah. keen sense of your own insignificance in the great scheme of things. Yeah, Table Mountain, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's a, good, a good part of the world. Yeah. Let's take a look at one of your Instagram posts here, Louis, because uh, you're a, a horseman. Is that right? Um, yeah, so my kids got me into the horses, and that was the day um, Sophia, my middle, middle one, uh, had two first first positions and I was wearing blue as you can see and whenever I go now to one of her events I need to wear blue so she tells me you gotta wear blue it's a pity it's not stinger green but yeah it's it's blue so <laughs> great stuff well, when it comes to it, a potential let's just call it that for now uh, tournaments in South Africa is it something that the fans will turn out for because w- what we notice when we ask for for tweets and social media posts on the on the hashtag live broadcast is just hundreds come in from South Africa. So people are watching oh, and they're getting 100%. behind you. Do you think they turn out for a tournament? 100%. They will turn out. I think we're hungry for a really big golf event. Um, 
you know, we hosted the President's Cup way back, um, I think 2003 it was, um, down at the links at Fancourt. Um, you know, the net bank used to be there at, at Sun City, which was a 12-man field, which was a, which was a great tournament. And um, I think something like this would just uh, be unbelievable for, for the fans. Absolutely, it would. What's the plan tomorrow? Win, win two trophies, yeah, probably. Yeah, play, uh, get the three shots done. Yeah, look, this golf course, the greens got really crusty today, and, and it's difficult getting it close to the pins, but um, it's so good. It runs so good that you can make quite a few putts. So um, I think uh, you've just got to give yourself positions for like uh, or opportunities for birdie. But like I say, it's so difficult just getting it close to the hole. You you know, you're playing it sort of like uh, like a little bit of links golf, trying to yeah, pitch it f 15 short and run it up there by the green and um, on the green and. You're something of an expert on links golf courses anyway. I haven't won at St Andrews, right? By what seven? Yeah, it was a long time ago. <laughs> I know, but you know, the, the, there's definitely a little links uh, in this golf course, and uh, it's only going to get harder and faster. I think we've really got to hit it on the fairways if you're going to get it underneath the hole. Yeah, look, the the the, the main thing is getting the fairway because the rough is brutal. You can't really control it out no. of there, and the, and then um, you know, with the slopes on the greens, you need to really be pinpoint on where you're going. Um, but uh, again, there is low rounds out there. You can see see someone shooting six, seven under. So I think tomorrow is going to be, um, you know, interesting. What about a back-to-back -back team win and to recreate some of these scenes in Tulsa? And it might be you as well, Louis, because it was Brandon who made the playoff, wasn't it, in yeah. Tulsa in the individual competition? But he had a big putt that clinched it for you. Dean Burmester made a massive putt as well on 16. And yeah, that was, was your first victory since London. It was... Yeah, I was, I was playing with Dean and he made that putt at the same time Brandon birdied 17. All of a sudden we went from one behind to one ahead and wasn't sure that DJ's score didn't count and heard when we stood there by the green on 18, DJ's score won't count unless he holds it for two. So, how, um, how aware are you of how the other guys are playing, you know, while you're out on the golf course? So I was very aware there because my score wasn't close to counting. I was right. not playing great. So I was watching the whole time and um, I could see what's going on. And Dean was playing. He should have shot nine under. He was playing so good. And then um, just watching it, watching it. And, and you get nervous because it's out of your hands yeah. and it's, it's them doing their thing. But uh, it was great to see Brandon make the playoff, and um, you know, unfortunately, he couldn't pull pull off the win with DJ making birdie there. But um, he did a very good two putt uh, for the team to win. Well, great to talk to you, Louis. Thanks for stopping by. By the way, yeah. if you do stop by in the post game show, it normally propels you to greatness. It does. Yeah. Okay. On on Championship okay, Sunday, good. Mito was in here last night. He's taken the lead, so maybe there's Perfect. something similar for you tomorrow. Love it. Louis Oosthuizen, the captain of Team I've, uh, Stinger. I put a dent in your helmet. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's okay, Charles' problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's the truth. Poor Charles. But he's still in the competition, isn't he? He's got a huge role to play for Stinger tomorrow to try and take out a second consecutive team victory. Stinger are three behind the overnight leaders, Torque, in the team competition. But this is how it looks in the individual competition. Heading into Championship Sunday, Mito Pereira with a 67 today. And he is nine under par, one ahead of overnight leader Harold Varner III. Louis Eustazen still there on six under par. Looking down the leaderboard, Martin Keimer, one under today, but two over for the competition. Bubba Watson, topsy-turvy competition for him. Four over yesterday, four under today, but again, he's got a role to play for the Range Goats tomorrow, who are level with Stinger on 15 under three behind Torque, As you can see here, it is all shaping up for another classic championship Sunday. Torque with a three stroke lead over Stinger and the Range Goats, the four aces, you can never count them out. 13 under par, the Majestics looking for a first podium finish since Boston last season. It's been another great day here at Trump National in Washington, D.C., and we look forward to your company tomorrow here, the Live Golf League in full flow. After tomorrow, we reach the halfway stage 
of the season. Would you believe it? Mito Pereira, big day for him tomorrow. Harold Varner III is there or thereabouts as well. Could it be Stenson's day? Could it be Nars' day? Could it be Louis Oosthuizen's day? We shall see. Thanks for joining us for day two. We'll see you for Championship Sunday tomorrow from the entire team. Goodbye for now.